Hello everyone, my name is Fatma Ahmed Qureshi and I'm a Medadia intern. This video is a part of a series by interns in which we are going to talk all about biostatistics. So if you want to learn more, go check out Medadia YouTube channel. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So in this video, we are going to talk about mirrors of association. So the objectives of this video is to have a clearer understanding of relative risk, odds ratio, attributable risk, and number needed to treat. In order to have a clearer understanding of these terms, it's important to discuss the background, that is the study designs in which these terms will come up. So I'm going to give a quick overview about cohort study versus case control. In case control, we start at the outcome and we take two groups cases and control. The cases are the ones with disease and the control do not have the disease or the outcome. And we go back in time to see if the exposure or the risk had any association with the outcome. Whereas in retrospective cohort study, we will start with the risk. Therefore, we will take two groups, one with the positive risk factor, that means that they have been exposed to the risk and the one with negative risk factor, which means that they have not been exposed to the risk. And we will go back in time to inspect the history. In prospective cohort study, we also start with the risk. So that means that we take two groups, one which is exposed to the risk factor, one which is not exposed to the risk factor, and we go follow them in the future to find out if that risk was associated with the outcome. Now we have a clear understanding of the study designs these terms will be used in. If you want more information, you should check out MedEDIA YouTube channel to learn more about study designs. We're going to talk about relative risk and attributable risk. The relative risk compares disease development probability between exposed group and unexposed group. It is used in cohort study. So as you remember, in cohort study, we had exposure to the risk factor. Now we're going to compare the two probabilities of the disease development in those two groups. So relative risk is defined as the probability of disease in the exposed population divided by probability of disease in non-exposed population. So now we have attributable risk. Attributable risk or risk difference is the difference between the incidence rates in the exposed and non-exposed populations. This is also known as absolute risk reduction in treatments. I'm going to talk about this later. So the formula for absolute risk reduction or attributable risk or risk difference is risk for non-exposed people to develop the disease minus risk of exposed people to develop the disease. So we should highlight here that it is not the ratio like relative risk. It is the difference between the risks. So if you are a bit confused up till now, don't worry, we have an example, so things can probably tie up better. Here we have a contingency or a two by two table of a population of 200. So here you can see we have the exposure status on the left side, whereas the disease status on the top. Let's say this exposure is smoking and this disease is COPD. Now we're going to see how these two things, this factor, and the outcome relate or associate with each other. So let's say that the probability that someone has developed the disease when they were exposed is 30 divided by 100, which actually just means that 100 people were exposed and out of those 100 people, 30 were the ones who actually developed the disease. So that probability comes out to be 0.3. Similarly, the probability of developing the disease when someone was not exposed is 20 divided by 100, which means that 100 people were unexposed, yet out of them, 20 people actually developed the disease. So now we have these two probabilities or risk of developing the disease when someone was exposed and when someone was not exposed. So how these two relate, we can see on an additive scale, we can relate it by this equation of subtraction. That is 0.30 minus 0 0.20 that will be 0 0.10 that means 10 percent on an additive scale this is known as attributable risk which means that the person who is exposed let's say 
who smokes is 10% more likely to develop the disease than a person who does not smoke or who is not exposed. More likely is the key word in the attributable risk. Now, if we relate these two same probabilities on a relative scale, as we can see here, that is 0.3 divided by 0.2, we will get 1.5, which is relative risk. This means that the person who is exposed, or in this case, smokes, is 1.5 times more likely to develop the disease. Times more is the key word in the relative risk. Subtracting 1 from the 1.5, we get 0.5 or 50% on relative scale. So what is an odds ratio? Well, like others, it is also a measure of association. That means it measures association between exposure and outcome. It is actually a ratio of odds of an event in one group versus odds of the event in the other group. In contrast to relative risk and attributable risk, odds ratio is the measure of association in case control study, which means that we take two groups Based on the outcome, one is the case while the other is controlled. And we go back in time to measure the association of the outcome, that is the disease, with the risk factor, which can be the exposure. So if we take the disease status and the exposure status of these two groups, that is case and control, in this 2 by 2 contingency table, then we can calculate odds ratio as A into D divided by B into C. Once you calculate odds ratio, it actually tells us how the exposure and the outcome actually relates in the case control study. So if the value of the odds ratio is 1, that means the exposure did not actually affect the odds of outcome. If the odds ratio is greater than 1, that means that the exposure is associated with higher odds of outcome. Whereas if odds ratio is less than 1, that means the exposure is associated with lower odds of outcome. So here we have the same 2 by 2 contingency table of population of 200. We have the disease status on the top and exposure status on the left. And we have designated these four boxes as A, B, C, and D. So the odds ratio will be calculated as the odds of developing the disease when someone is exposed divided by the odds of developing the disease when someone is not exposed. Or in simpler terms, a into D divided by B into C. Therefore, odds ratio is also known as cross product. Putting in the values, we get odds ratio of 1.71. That means odds of disease for someone who is exposed are 1.7 times more than someone who is not exposed. Once again to stress, odds ratio is different from relative risk because in relative risk, we were talking about the probabilities, whereas in odds ratio, we're talking about the odds of disease. So now we're going to talk about number needed to treat. So basically, whenever there's an intervention in real world, it can be a drug, it can be a diet, it can be a procedure. Things are not exactly always black and white. In that case, the exposure is actually the treatment itself, whereas the disease status is actually the outcome of that intervention. So how those things actually relate to a physician, we're going to discuss now. Number needed to treat actually gives an idea of the effectiveness of that intervention. It determines how many individuals should be treated with the medication or the intervention to prevent one person from developing the disease. The formula for number needed to treat is actually quite simple. It's 1 divided by attributable risk or absolute risk reduction. To make things clear, we're going to talk about an example. So let's say we have a research which says that beta blocker is actually beneficial for the patients of chronic heart disease. That research says that the risk of mortality in chronic heart disease patients without the intervention of carvedilol is 40%. Whereas the same risk of mortality in CHD patients with the carvedilol actually reduces to 34 percent as shown here now here is when i'm actually going to explain what i said earlier that attributable risk is also known as absolute risk reduction in the case of treatments so the risk of mortality is actually decreasing from 40 percent to 34 percent therefore absolute risk reduction will be known as 0.40 minus 0.34 that is 
0.06. So then we calculate numbers needed to treat. That is 1 divided by 0.06. That comes out to be 16.67. So what does this number mean? This means that 17 people need to be given Carvedilol in order for one of them to be saved from death. So now you can see how this number is actually important for a physician in order to gauge the effectiveness of the intervention, in this case is beta blocker carbidolol. So in order to have a better understanding of numbers needed to treat, we can apply this formula on the same contingency table for the smoking and the COPD example. So let's say that the probability of COPD when someone smokes is 30 divided by 100, that is 0.3. And the probability of the COPD when someone does not smoke is 20 divided by 100. So on the additive scale, if we compare the two probabilities, we get 0.1. That is the attributable risk. Now we can calculate number needed to treat. That is 1 divided by 0.1. That is 10. So what does this mean? This means that 10 people need to be taken cigarette away from in order to save one from COPD. Again, this is just an example for the better understanding of the concept. So you can see that the number needed to treat is actually a very important value because it is used to assess beneficial and harmful effects of medical interventions. I actually suggest that you look up different examples of number needed to treat in different research papers for some interesting revelations. So now that we have discussed all the measures of association and how to calculate them, I'm going to give you an example of how to do these calculations in Microsoft Excel. So once you open Microsoft Excel, this is the kind of layout that you see. So we have horizontal rows and vertical columns. There are different cells which are defined by their row number and their column number, which in this example is C4. So now we have put the data of the same two by two contingency table that we've been using in this video in different cells. I'm going to change the disease status and exposure status so it makes more sense in accordance to the video. So in order to calculate the risk of developing COPD in smokers, first we are going to put is equal to and then we are going to click on B2, that is 30, then divided by D2, that is 100. So we get 0 0.30. Now putting our cursor towards bottom right of the cell, we see a plus sign, which if we click and drag towards the bottom, is going to give us the risk of developing COPD in non-smokers. That is 0.2. Now, in order to calculate the attributable risk, we're again going to start with an equal sign and then we're going to click on the risk of developing the disease in smokers. Then we're going to put minus and click on the risk of developing disease in non-smokers. So, E2 minus E3 it gives us 0.1. And we know that calculating relative risk, we have to divide these two risks. So, E2 divided by E3 will be 1.5. In order to calculate odds ratio, we will start with an equal sign, multiply the A and D divided by the product of B and C. Then we get 1.71. In order to calculate the NNT, that is number digit to treat, we are going to write an equal sign, 1 divided by attributable risk, that is E6, and we get the number needed to treat, that is 10. So now you can see that Microsoft Excel is excellent in calculating these measures of association with large amounts of data when you have these columns and rows going. Therefore, it is very helpful in statistics and research designs. That's it for today's video. I suggest that you go over this video again in order to solidify the concepts. Nevertheless, if you have any questions, please comment down below so we can answer them. Thank you so much for listening. Goodbye.